Good afternoon, Chairman. We'll try my best to fit ankle arthroscopy in seven minutes. So ankle is a big joint. It's not a small joint. You need to have a bigger mindset to look at it. All instruments that are needed are all of the same knee joint and not, not anything special. It's been described for almost a century, but in the last 15, 20 years, it has taken a lot of importance in therapeutic procedures. So as I said, you need a standard 4mm scope, 30 degrees arthroscope. Rest all are desirable, but not essential. So going to indications of ankle arthroscopy, I divide them in anterior, middle and posterior thirds. Anterior thirds are anterior impingement like you see in footballers or like this anteromedial tibial osteophytes which need to be debrided or burnt down or like which comes out like this, look, should look like this at the end of procedure or anterolateral soft tissue impingement like synovium or meniscoid lesions. They look like this intra-articularly and can be RF'd or burnt down or shaved down like this. Similarly, you have loose bodies in anterior ankle, which can be addressed arthroscopically with great relief and minimally invasive techniques. Middle third have osteochondral defects, syndesmotic injuries or impingements and ankle arthritis, which needs an arthroscopic arthrodesis. So this is an OCD, which looks like this and should look like this after you've done a bone marrow stimulation. Syndes, uh, syndesmotic impingements or instabilities can be addressed arthroscopically. You have a bunch of synovium lying at the syndesmosis which can be addressed or sometime, or which can be addressed with an RF or sometimes you get avulsions and loose bodies in syndesmosis which can be tackled arthroscopically. Arthroscopic ankle arthrodesis is the new gold standard of arthrodesis management of ankle. So you can just do a percute fixation and debride the ankle joint arthroscopically. Similarly, in difficult ankle arthritis, which you know there is a soft tissue challenge which we need to overcome, it can be addressed very nicely arthroscopically and same percute screws are passed. And on the left is an ankle arthritic video, right side is a post-op gait. You can see the change in gait and the confidence that the patient has maintaining the fundamental principles of fusion. So in our study, in uh, we've seen there is a great improvement in functional outcome and reduced OT stay and hospital stay in arthroscopic fusions. So that's the new dawn of change in ankle fusion surgeries. With minimal soft tissue violation, shorter hospital stay, low post-op morbidity, and quicker fusion and early weight bearing functions. Coming to the posterior third indications, they are posterior impingements which are bony, soft tissues like FHL impingements and loose bodies which can be tackled with an hind foot endoscopy or posterior ankle arthroscopy. Hind foot endoscopy, this is the safe zone lateral to the FHL area. On the top you see the ankle, on the bottom half you see the subtalar joint so you can address everything in the hind foot posteriorly, that's ankle, talus and subtalar joints arthroscopically. This is how the ankle can be explored. Other scopy indications in foot are sinus tarsi scopies. That's for sinus tarsi syndrome. They are rotational instabilities where there is inflammation in the sinus tarsi. You need to debride them. Calcaneal fracture reduction confirmation. You can put a small 2.7 scopes, wash out all the debris, wash out small cartilaginous flex and make sure that your cartilage approximation is less than 2 millimeter gap or subtalar fusion which can be done arthroscopically like an ankle fusion and you get good results minimally invasively. Next is first MTP joint arthroscopy that is the grade 2 arthroscopy. You get synovitis, you get impingements like hallux rigidus or you have an osteochondral injury especially what we see in sports especially in cocoa players they get a lot of MTP injuries and that can be addressed with a small joint arthroscope of the first MTP. Another emerging technology in foot and ankle in arthroscopy is tendinoscopy. So tendoscopy is performed for diagnosis and treatment of pathologic conditions of four major tendons of hind foot. They are peroneal tendons, tip post, FHL and Achilles tendon. Peroneal tendons can have stenosynovitis, ruptures, tendon subluxation or dislocations or impingements. They'll have pain on the lateral ankle. It's done in a supine position below the uh, lateral to the lateral malleolus and this is what you see on a tendinoscopy. You see, you can introduce your shaver to debride the tenosynovium. You can identify the tears and repair it with mini uh, suturing techniques. Next is tibialis posterior. You have dysfunction, tenosynovitis in a rheumatoid individual. Sometimes you see with a plano valgoid foot. Similar 
tendoscopies, but on the medial side of the foot. And this is where it looks like small tears or rents are repaired. Next is FHL, that's hind foot tendon, just next to the neurovascular bundle, posterior impingement, tenosynovitis, loose bodies, low lying muscle belly. Clinical symptoms on tiptoeing, like a ballerina or a fast bowler, sometimes on his front foot. This is what it looks like, and as you've seen in hind foot endoscopy, low lying FHL belly, and this is a loose body on the FHL sheath. This is what it looks like. You need to debride and decompress the tendon right up to zone two. Next is tendo Achilles. You have insertional and non-insertional pathology. The technique is done in a prone position, multiple portals, depending on the area of interest. You need to debride. If it is a non-insertional paratendon for a problem, you just need to debride it. But if it's an insertional rupture, you can do shoulder arthroscopy instruments and repair tendo Achilles as you repair a rotator cuff tendon. In chronic ruptures, some again something similar to a rotator cuff chronic instability, a rotator cuff chronic tear which is retracted, you do tendon transfers in the shoulder, something similar is done in the hind foot using the FHL tendon. So you do the same endoscopic FHL transfer and do a hind foot endoscopy and tag the FHL tendon, harvest it from the plantar side using a third portal and then percutaneously transfer it to the heel. So what you see is just three stab incisions and the repair for an FHL transfer to a chronic Achilles rupture. Last is the new dawn in lateral ligament instability, that's arthroscopic brostrum. This is a drawers test positive. What you see is a ATFL rupture. This is the instability on table. This is the bare footprint of FHL, uh, of ATFL, and this is what it looks like post repair. And this is the stability. So you need, are you going to live in the past or going to or live in the present and future? We need to take the plunge for foot and ankle arthroscopy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions?